Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-811. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-811 should be kept in a climate-controlled cylindrical glass enclosure between 10 and 20 meters in diameter, filled to a depth of no less than 2.5 meters on average with wetland soil and stagnant fresh water. It is to be furnished with a variety of aquatic plants from its native swamp it as the remaining vegetation there has exhibited the adaptation to regrow quickly from injuries injured during contact with SCP-811 as long as the roots are undamaged. Logs of manageable size and additional humus-rich soil may be provided for good behavior. Water depth is not to exceed half a meter at its lowest point. Height of the enclosure must be no less than 5 meters above the highest soil point. Temperature is to be kept at 25 degrees Celsius, and humidity should be kept above 70%. There is to be a decontamination airlock chamber between the door into the enclosure and the door to the rest of the facility. Air that is ventilated into the enclosure should not be recirculated back into the rest of the facility under any circumstances. The methane resulting from SCP-811's normal interaction with its environment is not anomalous and may be bottled for use as fuel. No heated elements or open flames are permitted inside the enclosure. The enclosure must be tested daily for pH and microbe levels in both the soil and water, as well as for changes in chemical composition. Enclosure should be cleaned bi-weekly, preferably by D-Class personnel. All discarded waste should be put in quarantine for analysis before disposal by standard biohazard protocol. Subject is to be given at least 5 kilograms of live food 24 hours after its completion of its previous meal. Subject is not averse to preying on humans, and it is recommended that personnel not enter the enclosure if SCP-811 has not fed in over 16 hours. No invasive medical procedure may be performed on SCP-811 outside of emergency situations in which such a procedure is required to save a subject's life. Minimally invasive procedures require review and unanimous approval by SCP-811's assigned medical team and the current project head. See document 811-B for a list of substances that may be administered as medication to SCP-811. All requests by the subject are to be reviewed by both an overseeing animal enrichment specialist and at least one level 3 personnel before approval, and the review should not take more than 48 hours unless exceptional circumstances dictate otherwise. While SCP-811 is not generally aggressive unless it feels hungry or threatened, all handling personnel are to be cautioned that it is still an opportunistic ambush predator and safety precautions must still be taken to avoid injury or infection. All personnel entering the enclosure must wear full-body, non-organic biohazard suits and breath masks, and must be in groups of at least two. No personnel are to enter the enclosure if they have open wounds or sores anywhere on their body. Those suffering from asthma or other respiratory affecting conditions are prohibited from entering the enclosure without a signed note from a physician with level 4 security clearance. As far as research indicates, SCP-811 cannot cause serious injury to anyone properly wearing their biohazard suit. Anyone who removes any part of their biohazard suit while still in the enclosure, for any reason at all, will still be subject to disciplinary action, up to and including reassignment to a project that would not be adversely affected by their status as an amputee. Description SCP-811 is shaped similarly to a human female with disproportionately long and thin limbs and a slightly bloated abdominal region. It is 171 centimeters tall and weighs just under 47 kilograms due to its strange physiology. See Addendum 811-2 for details. Its skin has slight abrasive properties and is a mottled green color that serves to camouflage it among the reeds in its natural habitat. Its sweat has been observed to act as a mild skin irritant. It has extremely oily black hair that has proven to be resistant to cleaning with conventional shampoos. See Addendum 811-1. It shows partial comprehension of human language consistent with case studies of feral children that had been abandoned at a few years old instead of as infants. 
The palmo plantar surfaces of SCP-811 skin constantly secrete a clear, green-tinted mucus with minor adhesive properties. This mucus does not appear to have any effect on SCP-811's own tissue, but any other organic matter that it comes into contact with begins to rapidly decompose, through processes not fully understood, reducing the matter into a slightly viscous black liquid. SCP-811 can then absorb said liquid through its skin and directly into its circulatory system. Tests have shown that SCP-811's entire circulatory system is filled with liquefied decaying matter. Biopsies taken from SCP-811 have shown the presence of anaerobic bacteria in all examined cells, which, due to the apparent lack of anything resembling functional red blood cells in the subject, are currently presumed to be what SCP-811 uses to metabolize the chemicals in its circulatory system. SCP-811 does not defecate or otherwise produce feces in the traditional sense, and entirely lacks a small or large intestine. Instead, Cellular waste and substances SCP-811 is unable to metabolize collect in what is, anatomically speaking, its stomach. Within the stomach, enzymes and bacterial flora cause it to congeal into a grainy, tar-like substance that SCP-811 periodically voids by voluntary projectile regurgitation, a mechanism which it uses to hunt. It preferentially aims at the face or at any perceived open wounds on its target then waits for the target to die of either immediate asphyxiation by blockage of the mouth and nose, or in a few days, of multi-systematic failure resulting from aggressive bacterial infection. SCP-811's teeth did not seem to have any abnormal resistance to decay resulting from chronic exposure to the compounds and microflora in its waste. See Addendum 811-1. Prognosis for personnel who have had contact with SCP-811's waste through mucous membrane or open wound is good if broad spectrum antibiotic therapy has begun in the first three hours, but then rapidly declines. Personnel who are D-class or have gone 12 hours without getting treatment may request termination. Addendum 811-1 To date, SCP-811 has requested Regular delivery of bovine prey, denied. That crocodilians be removed from its prey animal rotation, approved. The water be stonked with a variety of fish species from its native, denied. One hairbrush made from 100% synthetic materials, approved. For one D-class personnel to every other day come in with a basin and shower head to wash and condition its hair, approved. It has been noted that standard strength hair shampoos do not adequately clean away the excessive oil in SCP-811's hair, and the use of a formula with a higher proportion of stronger surfactants has been authorized. To be addressed by a two-syllable name that has been translated as AE, SCP-811 being illiterate and thus not capable of choosing a spelling for itself, approved. Side note. Due to SCP-811's difficulty with language, it has been deemed acceptable to use its chosen name when directly speaking to it for the purpose of streamlining meaningful conversation. Relief from its chronic tooth pain. Approved. Request was initially denied until a safe and effective method of administering general anesthesia to SCP-811 was discovered and a dental surgery plan devised. Tooth number 47, FTI, two-digit rotation, removed to test method and adjust for unpredicted special aftercare requirements. Remainder of SCP-811's teeth removed and overdenture implants installed in a second operation. SCP-811 supplied with complete dentures to be repaired as needed. One turtle in a hazmat suit for non-dietary purposes. Denied. Turtles accordingly removed from prey animal rotation possibility of placing a small turtle habitat in the observation area outside SCP-811's enclosure for enrichment under consideration. Addendum 811-2 Due to the fact that SCP-811 has lungs and teeth, despite having no apparent use for either, it was brought to Bioresearch Area 12's radiology lab for x-rays to examine its internal structure. Results were inconclusive. 
Subsequent MRI testing has revealed that SCP-811 has a number of unusual glands and organs attached to its lymphatic system, which may assist in regulation of the viscosity and microbial flora of the material in its circulatory system. One such organ in the abdominal region appears to contain lighter-than-air gas. The possibility that SCP-811 was once is being explored. Due to the impossibility of maintaining a sterile operating environment, limited understanding of SCP-811's biology and difficulty in calculating the subject's mass, the risk of major complications or subject death has been deemed too high to authorize exploratory surgery. And this is Interview Log 811-16. Interviewers Dr. Trebuchet and Junior Lab Assistant Wachtel. Dr. Trebuchet and Junior Lab Assistant Wachtel enter SCP-811's containment unit. Dr. Trebuchet is carrying a clipboard with a document on it and the shoe box. A. Look D. What want? Questions. Points to shoe box. Food. Dr. Trebuchet nods and opens the shoe box. A frog jumps out. SCP-811 brings her foot down on the frog as it lands and begins to digest it. Dr. D wants questions? Yes. Hands the clipboard to Wachtel. Points to something on it. Reading from the clipboard. What's the earliest thing you can remember? Are we... Is thing? Um... Oh. Early things. Things... Before. Before box. Before the box. Most before. Yes. With sweeping and demonstrative arm and hand movements. Big man. Tall. I small. Very smaller than man. Uses hand to indicate a height of approximately one meter off the ground. Points to her own arm. Was like... Was like man. What was like him? Pinches some of her skin between two fingers. Is not like I. Like a man. Like people. Your skin. Skin. Prods her arm thoughtfully, then smiles. Skin. Wait, you mean you had skin like ours? It appears so. A. What after? Pointing to the inside of one elbow. A. Stick here. Cold. Needle. A. Gather. <coughs> They're called needles. Needle. Here. Cold. And then? Pain. Pantomiming something coming out of her mouth. Red, 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 red. Was very hungry, scared, ate man, skin, like this. Oh, oh God. At this point, Walter begins to vomit in his hazmat suit. SCP-811, misinterpreting this as a sign of hostility, retreats into one of the pools of water in its enclosure and does not resurface until both Wachtel and Dr. Trebuchet have left. Notes. While I understand the appeal of training the new blood on something relatively harmless and as green as they are, could you please throw them at some other humanoid for a while? I'm trying to actually get things done here. Dr. Trebuchet, signing out. Okay. I think that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, if indeed you still are. And you are all dismissed. Goodbye. Hello everyone, Lumi here. First of all, Wilgen, thank you so much for casting me for this role. I had such fun coming up with the accent for IE. And no for the advertisement part. If you guys would like to hear me read stories, sing songs, and do some other small things, follow a link down below to my YouTube channel. Or if you are more of a stream person, you can follow another link down below to my Twitch stream. Actually, I should be streaming around the time this video is released. <laughs> Maybe I'll see some of you guys there. Have a nice night, everyone. Bye.
I would like to give a special thank you to Bob, Ubermate, James Saba, Arbiter Soul, Dr. Bright, Darius Tan, Maximus Decimus, Justin Day, Ophelia Gray, Durnom, Alex Hill, NJ Vojak, Corey Barker, Aronian, and Dr. Proctor. Thank you all so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.